Hey everyone, in my last video, I mentioned that I would be showing you how to use the Gradio application I made for SDXL Turbo. So first, go into the description below and click on the GitHub link. You will reach this page here, SDXL Turbo Comfy UI Workflows. You want to click on the code button and click on download zip. Now, if you are a power user and you know how to use GitHub, then you can use the HTTPS. So you can git clone this particular repo and you will have all of these files here. Once you've downloaded the zip file and extracted it, or if you've done git clone, you should have these files in a directory. In my case, I have it under SDXL Turbo under the code folder. So I'm going to open this folder in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so here I am inside of Visual Studio Code and uh, I have the project file open. Next, you want to go into your terminal, click on a new terminal. This should open a new terminal inside of your project file. Now, in my case, I already have a virtual environment as you can see here and here. But if you do not have a virtual environment, you want to do python-m venv dot venv then press enter it will create a virtual environment for you and in order to activate it you will do dot venv so your virtual environment name scripts activate the next thing that you want to do is do python dash m pip install dash r requirements dot txt so it will take everything that is inside this file and it will install it so these are our dependencies for this project next you want to test if the project is working so go into app.py open the file and you will see a base folder here this base folder points to your comfy ui project so you want to make sure that this path is pointing towards your comfy UI that is in your local machine. Now, in my case, it is in the D hard drive, AI folder, comfy UI, Windows portable. And then inside that, we have a comfy UI folder. Okay, so I show you inside our file explorer. In my case, I am using a different explorer, but you can use the Windows default file explorer. And once you go into your file where you have your run underscore NVIDIA GPU or run underscore CPU dot BUT file, there is a folder called Comfy UI. You want to get this path. In case you don't know how to get the path, you can right click on it. And in Windows, you will have copy as path. If you don't see it, click on properties and it will tell you where the file is located. So you want to copy it, go into the app.py file and replace this with your path. Now, when you copy it, you may see that these slashes may be different, maybe like this, and you get an error. So you want to replace the backslashes with a forward slash. So just replace it backspace and then replace it with a forward slash. Now, everything else should be good. The workflows are here. The URL to connect to Comfy UI is here. We have the input folder for Comfy UI the output folder for Comfy UI, where you've stored your upscaler model as well as your checkpoint model. So in case your folder structure is different, you want to update these values here with the one that is in your local machine. Next, we have K samplers. These are your Euler, DDPM, and so on. So if you have a particular one that you use, you can add it to the list. These are the ones that I use. Then we have the scheduler names. We have normal, keras, exponential, simple, and so on. Now, most of you, the only thing that you need to change is the base folder, and you should be good to go. Now, if you're loading your own workflow, just make sure that you have the correct JSON file name here. If you've downloaded the GitHub project, you already have the three different workflows I've provided to you, and the name should be exactly as mentioned here. Now, don't worry about the rest of the code. I will explain it later. Back into your terminal, do Python, and you want to do app.py. Press enter. Once you get the link, click on it, and it should open the UI. So at the top, you will have your checkpoint. For text to image and image to image, you want to use the SDXL turbo, and then text to image is very simple you just put a a prompt 
I'm going to say execute Pokemon character. Now, before you click on the generate button, you want to make sure that your Comfy UI is running. So open a terminal, navigate to the Comfy UI path, and you will do the run nvidia.bat file. Now, once it's loaded, you will have your default workflow or whichever workflow you are using. You can close out of this and click on the generate button for the radio application. Let's go into the terminal for Comfy UI and we can see it says got prop and it is loading the model right now. And in here we can see SDXL Turbo with only one step. The prompt got executed and we have a sort of a cute Pokemon character here. Okay, next is image to image. Pretty simple. You want to drop your image here. Choose a denoising strength, a positive prompt. Click on generate. The high res fix. This one, you have more option to play with. But you want to go at the top. Make sure to change your model to a different one. And then change the settings. So now I'm going to show you the code base for this project. Everything is inside the app.py file. So at the top, we have the import statements. So if you know Python, we need to import certain packages in order to use it. Then this part is connecting to Comfy UI. So it's pointing towards your Comfy UI folder. I've already said here, it's the link Comfy UI uses. So it connects to this port. And then we have the workflows, key samplers, scheduler we've already seen those now this here is important it's loading the checkpoints so if you have checkpoints that is dot ckpt this particular function will not detect the ckpt file so if you have ckpt most of the of your checkpoints are ckpt then you want to change this save tenses to ckpt this here is loading the upscaler most of the upscalers actually pretty much all of them are dot dth but if you have one that is dot bin you want to convert it to pth and then load it in your comfy ui now this one i already talked about in a previous video it's basically getting the latest image we are doing a queue here starting a queue where we take a workflow we include it and then we sent a post request to the Comfy UI URL. And this function here is the text to image function. So if you want to modify anything in the text to image workflow, you want to do it inside of text to image workflow function here. So if you need to modify the text to image page here, I should say tab, then you want to do it inside of this function here. So right now we have the checkpoint name. We have the noise seed, which is randomly being generated and then we have a positive prompt. The positive prompt is the only field that we have in our greedy UI that the user can modify as of right now. But if you want to add a new field here, you will do it by adding a new line here. Just change what you want to add. Of course, depending on what you want to do, you want to modify the structure of the function itself. Okay. Otherwise, it's getting a previous image. So it's checking if we have a previous image, starting a prompt, and then making sure that we have a new image and display it as an output. Now below it, we have the image to image workflow, this one. And here we have the positive prop, denoising strength. We have an input image as inputs. And for output, we have just an output image field. So again, checkpoint is being shared across all tabs. We have the positive prop, denoising strength. And then we have an input image. This input image, we are converting it and downscaling it to 512 by 512 resolution. Again, we have a seed that is randomly being generated. And then we are doing the exact same thing. Checking your previous image, start a queue, and then wait until the new image has generated. For the high res fix workflow, pretty much the same thing, but we have more fields that we are exposing in the Grady UI. Now here, this is subjective. So for the high res fix, let's say you are passing a 768 by 768 image as your input image and you want to upscale it, then you want to make sure that this part here is not downscaling your image because right now the way I have it set up is if you put a an input image that is 
larger than 512 by 512. It will downscale that input image to 512 by 512 and then upscale it based on the upscaler that you would choose. So just in case you, you don't want this, then you want to comment out all of these. And then instead of resize image here, you will use input image like this. So we do input image here and comment out all of these. This way, if your input image has a larger resolution than 512 by 512, you are just going to save it as an input image and pass it to the upscaler to upscale that uh, image. Now, if we go below, we have the main function and this is where we are building the grid application. So for this, I'm using blocks, which allows me to use rows and columns. So this entire thing is a block and this is a row. Here I have one row and I have two columns. So the positive front is in one column, generate button is in another column, but both of them are in the same row. And that's how I built the UI. Now you can take a look at uh, the code, improve on it or modify it, depending on what you want to do with it. So with that, uh, it was a short video, but I just wanted to point out how to use the radio application and to explain the code in case someone wants to modify it. All right, so that should be it for today thank you for watching if you like this video click on the like button subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one